The World Bank says the Naira has weakened by nearly 40% against the U.S. dollar since the mid-June devaluation. Although these measures are intended to improve the fiscal and external accounts of the nation, their inflationary effects in the near term can erode the purchasing power of households and weigh on economic activity. Of course, in June 2023, the Central Bank of Nigeria directed deposit money banks to remove the red cap on the Naira at the official investors and exporters window of the foreign exchange market and allow the free float of the Naira against the dollar and other global currencies. Since then, the Naira had fallen from 473 Naira to around 800 Naira officially and 1,000 Naira and above unofficially. As we celebrate Nigeria's 63rd independence anniversary, we shall be discussing how the Naira fell from grace to grass. A currency which was originally the British pounds and was changed in 1973 to the Naira was stronger than the US dollar, but as at, was at par with the British pounds. Today, it's 800 Naira official rate and over 1,000 Naira at the power market to the same U.S. dollars. This is our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. And teachers in Nigeria and world over were yesterday described as destiny molders and life changers for their critical roles in the mental and behavioral development of their pupils and students. Among those who sang their praises yesterday being World Teachers' Day was Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, who noted that teachers or lecturers not only educate but also serve as guardians and mentors to the wards in the schools at all levels. The Speaker assured teachers of the readiness of the 10th House under his leadership to assist the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration towards the development of the education sector in the country as well as better welfare for workers in the sector. We will be joined this morning by a teacher as we discuss the nation's education sector as our second hot topic. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies and the headlines that made it there with our analysts on Off the Press. Hello and welcome to the Friday edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menonwezigwe. And straight to our top trending. The Senate is to summon service chiefs and uh, demand military, military, special military operations. And worried by the worsening insecurity in the country, the Senate on Thursday resolved to summon the service chiefs and demand special military intervention. The upper chamber took the decision on Thursday after deliberating a motion on the kidnap of five female students from the Federal University Dunsin Ma in Kaduna, Kasina State on Wednesday. Those to be summoned include the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuarid Lagbaja, Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, and Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar. Also to be invited are the Inspector General of Police, Ulukayode Ebetoko and the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Rubado. The lawmakers asked security agencies to be more proactive and ensure the rescue of the abducted female student as well as the core members kidnapped by terrorists in Zamfara State. They urged the military to conduct special operations to dislodge bandits in the northwest and in other parts of the country and called on the federal government to address the manpower deficit in the armed forces and the police. The senators also emphasized the need for the creation of state police as one of the solutions to the security challenges in the country. However, no date has been fixed yet for the planned meeting with the service chiefs. No fewer than five 
Female students of the Federal University of Dinsuma in Katsina State were on Wednesday abducted by suspected terrorists, with police confirming the arrest of one suspect in connection with the incident. The victims were said to have been kidnapped in their residence located behind Mariamo Ajiri Memorial International School along Saskia Road. The students were reportedly abducted in the early hours of Wednesday at about 2.30 a.m. One suspect had been arrest, arrested in connection with the incident, saying that investigation was still ongoing with a view to rescuing the abductees from the hand of the hoodlums. Why these people keep going for people's daughters, we don't know. They're looking for wives, they should go cut some girls nicely. But again, being criminals as they are, they wouldn't know how to go about cutting a woman. So they just go to their schools and pick them up. They steal our daughters and, and get them pregnant and have babies with them. I hope that this will not end up being like the Chiba girls. I hope that these girls will be released with immediate alacrity, as we say in local parlance, because we can't continue with this kind of madness. I'm glad that the, the Senate has summoned them. Let them come and talk, because we need to see a change to this narrative. Enough of waking up and hearing that some hoodlums have gone to some schools and kidnapped our children. The schools should be safe. If they're not safe, education in the North will become history. It's already beginning to affect it greatly. So something needs to be done. We can't continue with these kind of horrible stories. I really do appreciate this summon by the Senate, and I hope something good comes out of it quickly. All right, I'm almost tempted to add the name of the Lord to this prayer because this is that important and that serious. All right, let's go to our second hot topic, our top trending. The Supreme Court has fixed 15th December to rule on Namdi Kanu's continued detention. Um, for judgment, after hearing two separate appeals filed by the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mr. Namdi Kanu, over his continued detention. Nigeria's Apex Court had originally fixed yesterday, that's the 5th of October 2023, for the definite hearing on two separate appeals filed by the detained IPOB leader through his lawyers against his continued detention. Meanwhile, after the hearing, the Apex Court fixed December 15th for judgment on the continued detention of, of Kano. Kano's legal team was led by the new lead counsel, Kanu Agabi, S.A.N., appearing with Mike Ozokema, S.A.N., Naimeka Ijiofo, Ifani Ijiofo, and Mr. Aloy Ijiofo. Ejiamaka Jimako, in a post shared on his uh, ex-former Twitter handle, shortly after the court session said, quote, today at the Supreme Court, the new lead counsel, Kanu Agabi, S.A.N., informed the court that he is Appearing with Mike Ozokame, S.A.N., Nemeka Ejiofo, Ifany Ejiofo, and himself. The hearing was conducted and the court adjourned to 15 December for judgment. The Court of Appeal in October 2022 discharged Kano of the 15 counts against him. The appellate court subsequently barred any further arrest, detention, and trial of Kano on the existing charges before his forceful, extraordinary rendition from Kenya to Nigeria by the agents of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the 27th of June 2021. The federal government later appealed against the judgment at the Supreme Court and subsequently got another panel of the court to appeal to say the judgment of the appellate court. Despite the judgment, Kanu has remained in the solitary confinement at the facility of the Department of State Services nearly one year after the judgment discharging him. All right, so there you have it. We'll move to our third top trending. No fewer than 3,000 people will receive, uh, well, they receive free uh, treatment in Imo State, especially from oil producing areas of the state. Uh, they have received free eye surgeries and other related medical care services, courtesy of Seplot Energy in partnership with NNPC. The gesture was part of the Corporate Social Responsibility Healthcare Program 
of the oil producing companies designed to provide quality eye care for people in their host communities. Speaking at the official unveiling of the 2023 edition of initiative termed I Can See in Oweri, 4th October 2023, the Seplot Energy Managing Director, East Onshore, Ebiada Hotoi, said the initiative, a multi-million project, was in line with Sustainable Development Goal 3, aimed at ensuring healthy lives and to promote general well-being of all people of all ages. According to her, other objectives of the I Can See initiative include to provide free optical treatment at all levels to members of the communities, reduce cases of permanent loss of vision, provide free reading glasses, and treat other related eye problems. According to her, the program also aimed at educating patients on ways to care for their eyes and how to detect glaucoma, as well as educating patients on lifestyle changes required to reduce the rates of hypertension and diabetes. She further explained that the program, which commenced 12 years ago, had delivered 96,411 eye treatments, dispensed 45,074 reading glasses, and performed 4,218 surgeries. In the JV's Eastern Asset, where the program was introduced in 2017, 16,467, 46 persons have been screened, 7,737 eyeglasses dispensed, and 577 surgeries performed. She further declared that the ongoing program is planned to screen 3,000 persons, perform 150 cataract surgeries, and provide 2,000 reading glasses. Also, the NNPC, through its representative, Wilson Halimat, said it was sensitive to the socioeconomic plights and health of the people and was happy to have partnered and have partners that are adding, adding value to the lives of the people of the community and humanity at large. She also appreciated the host communities, the Emo State Government and other stakeholders for their support towards this project. All right, so um, those are our three top trending this morning. It is good to give back to the society where you are making progress. And that's exactly what Seplat and NNPC are doing. They've done that in Emo State. Want to hear more of such across the country. You're watching The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We'll be back in a moment with Of The Press to stay with us. <laughs> 